convinced listening to them that the Constitution, our present Constitution, would need amendment or revision. The 1987 Constitution is a long-running Constitution with no amendments up to this very day. After a quarter of a century, unlike the 1935 Constitution, which has undergone three amendments, the 1973 Constitution has undergone four amendments shortly after the ratification, but until today, the 1987 Constitution. And may I acknowledge my fellow constitutionalist member of the Constitutional Commission, Feli Aquino Arroyo, who is here with us. Feli. And I was looking to the tarpaulin to my left and to my right, and I see Apolinario Mabini, who was the brains of the revolution, and a political philosopher, during his time, the convening of the Malolos Congress, the Malolos Congress adopted a parliamentary form of government. Our forefathers were for parliamentary form of government. And history says that had it not been for the American intrusion, we will have from the very beginning a parliamentary form of government, not a presidential form of government. I was with the peace process for a decade, negotiating with the CPP, NPA, and NDF. And my study of forms of government, like federalism, has been a key to addressing insurgencies, rebellions in many parts of the globe, including the problem in Spain. So worth exploring federalism and parliamentary form of government. May I just add, I see Apolinario Mabini. I see Claro and Recto. Mabini was saying, it is not enough that we have external revolutions, that we change systems or structures, unless there is also internal revolution a change in our minds and attitudes in La Revolución Filipina. I see Claudio Emrecto. He was also saying, after becoming president of the 34th Constitutional Convention, that the best amendment to our lives, to our systems, will be an amendment of our attitudes and beliefs. So I hope as we advocate changes in our systems and structures. We bear in mind what Mabini has said years ago, what Claro Imbrecto has counseled us many years ago. My topic is about making the electoral system more inclusive and more merit-oriented, a doable aspiration. I think the first thing that we have to ask is what is an electoral system. There are so many definitions of electoral systems. Everything from the smallest administrative detail up to large political context is referred to as electoral systems. But the idea that International Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance gives us a definition of electoral system. It tells us that it is a way of translating all these electoral votes into political seats. For from votes to political seats would be the meaning of electoral system. Now, what do we have in the Philippines? We have 12 identified in the world 12 identified electoral systems. But what do we have in the Philippines? You have the first pass, the post system, and the mixed member proportional system. What is the first pass, the post system? Kung sino man po ang mahakuha ng maraming boto, 
regardless of absolute majority of valid votes. Pag siya po ang nauuna sa mga kandidato, siya po ang mananalo. For president or vice president, yun po ang sistema po natin. What about the mixed number proportional system? It's a mixed system. Sa mga distrito po, we have, say, a candidate for congressman. No? Kung siya po ang ahead of the others, nangunguna, without even majority votes, he would win as our congressman. The other system is the partyless system. Not based on the votes that a candidate has garnered, but based on proportional votes that a party has received. So this is what we have in the Philippines. FT first passed the post and the next member proportional. Now, inclusiveness in the Philippines. It is said that there are three good qualities of an electoral system. They are inclusive, number two, merit-oriented, and number three, reform-sensitive. We go to inclusiveness. What is inclusiveness? It is an envirom inviting environment where different sectors of the society are players or stakeholders in the electoral process. Lahat po, wala pong exception. Lahat po players, lahat po stakeholders, fully disabled or PWD, lahat po, detainees or not detainees, we are all players in the electoral process. Now, in the Philippines, it's a work in progress. Why does it work in progress? We have persons with detainees. How many of them? According to the World Health Organization, 10% of the Philippine population are persons with disabilities. Who are they? Persons of long-term physical, mental, sensory, intellectual impairments. These are the PW 10%. So if we have a population of 100 million, about 10 million of our people are persons with disabilities. A survey was conducted by SWS shortly after the 2010 elections. And they were telling us, because families are ashamed of their loved ones being exposed to the public. Hindi pinaparehistro, hindi po pinaboboto. But the COMELEC has put up a mechanism, the interagency and NGO network to empower persons with disabilities. That's why today, they can register in the shopping malls, many of them, and it's the first best practice in the world, electoral best practice, where PWDs can vote in shopping malls. This was started by SM and, of course, followed by other shopping malls. PWDs. And the COMELEC has changed the registration form. Today, when a PWD goes to an electoral office, there is a form first to identify their disabilities and the assistance that they would need in case of election. Of course, we have not perfected it, so hopefully the Commonwealth will fine-tune making inclusive the electoral process for persons with disabilities. Detainees, how many of them, according to BJMP, about 100,000 detainees, not yet convicted, And how many voted in the 2010 elections? More than 17,000 detainees voted. They felt empowered. As a matter of fact, in the October 2010 election, a detainee not yet convicted was elected in Bai Pangasinan as barangay chairman. In 2013, about 35,000 detainees voted. I attended a uh, conference of electoral commissions somewhere in Africa. And after my presentation about inclusive electoral process, 
two Englishmen approached me and asking. In England, there was a vigorous debate whether or not detainees should be allowed to vote. But that proposal was voted down. Paano nangyari sa Pilipinas na yung mga bilanggo na hakaboto? Sabi ko naman, magagaling naman ang Pinoy only in the Philippines. So hopefully more detainees will be allowed to vote for the forthcoming 2016 elections. Indigenous peoples, the good Chief Justice mentioned about 79 kinds of indigenous peoples in the world, in, in the Philippines. If quantified, how many are they? According to NICP, the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, 16 million Filipinos are indigenous peoples. So just imagine if they can register and they can vote. Comelec has started the registration of IPs in the mountains, in remote areas, conducted satellite registration of indigenous peoples. If you ask some of them, kailan nga ba pinanganak? Sasabihin nila, noong kabilugan ng buwan, ako po ay pinanganak. Kailan kailan kinasal? Noong tag-ani, kami po ay kinasal. So I high time that we empower indigenous peoples in our country. Local absentee voting. We have local absentee voting. Members of AFP, PNP, or government officials on the day of the elections are assigned in different places, away from their places of registration, can vote. But this has to be fine-tuned and perfected because only a few have bills of local absentee voting. Overseas absentee voting. How many millions of Filipinos are about So many. But how many avail of overseas absentee voting? Less than a million up to this very day. So I think this is again a, uh, an issue that has to be addressed, to be fine-tuned by the Commission on Elections. Media. Okay. For the first time, for the 2013 elections, the media were allowed to vote. But again, this is an issue that has to be properly addressed so that more media can avail of this process. I remember before the 2013 elections, only about 300 to 500 members of media availed of this opportunity. But there are so many of them, if we include all the technicians helping our media people. Then first-time voters, how many of them in 2010? First-time voters at the age of 18. Six million first-time voters in 2010. Now, 2016 na po. Bakit ito po ay 10 million na? So, Comalik has started making electoral process inclusive for them by applying satellite registration in schools. So, I hope the present Comalik will enhance this process to be more inclusive for first-time voters. The partyless system, a very controversial uh, mechanism in our country. For many years, we have Anbagong Bayani versus Comelec, who can run as partyless nominees. What are these partyless organizations that are, can aspire for a seat in Congress? For many years, under Anbagong Bayani, ang sinasabi po, Nominees should belong to marginalized and underrepresented. The party list organization should represent the marginalized and underrepresented. But today, in Atong Paglaum versus Comelec, this has been relaxed. This has been liberalized. So, baka po marami ng tumakbo. Because if you're a regional party, a regional organization, you did not represent the marginalized and underrepresented. The nominee did not be a marginalized and underrepresented. So, tingnan po natin for this forthcoming 2016 elections. Now, for inclusion, that's why it's a work in progress. And our lawmakers, policymakers, and organizations can help evacuees and refugees. How many of them? Thousands of them. Because of armed conflict in many parts of the country, because of natural calamities, 
Wala pong birth certificate. Walang registration records. So I think this is one area that has to be addressed by COMELEC. But because up to this very day, wala pa hong proseso to make inclusive the electoral process for evacuees and refugees. We are in quota. In many countries, we have three kinds of quota. We have candidates quota, political parties uh, quota, and one more quota. Let me see. What was that quota? Reserve seats quota. But in our country, do we have quotas for women? So that there will be gender balance in Congress? Wala pa ho. But there are six countries in Asia that have these quotas. Thailand. We have East uh, Timor. We have Bangladesh. We have Taiwan. And two more. And they have quotas for women. I think women should be given more voice in Congress. If the Constitutional Commission was able to do its work because of the active participation of women like Shelly Aquino Arroyo. So more women should have a voice in Congress. Lower voting age at 16. In Indonesia, it is 16. The lower voting age was many years ago, many summers ago. Ang kabataan po nga, imahuhusay na po, magagaling na po with the advent of information technology and their education. So why not lower the voting age from 18 to 16? So hopefully, our good friend Romy Makalintan will take into account this proposal. I remember po, when I was in the comedy, Romy Makalintan proposed media voting. Because men are saying, hindi kami nakakaboto. So Romy filed a petition to make the process inclusive. So tamang tama, I was in the forum, nandun po ako. So we thank Romy for making it possible for me get to vote in an electoral process. Now, merit-oriented. When I say merit, meaning the quality of uh, excellence. We also mean by uh, merit, the quality of being good or worthy, deserving of approval. So that if applied to the electoral process, what will it mean? It will mean, number one, Bing. <laughs> the manner of appointment of the chair and commissioners. In several countries, it is open. The names are floated before their appointment for people to make a comment on the qualifications of the chair and the commissioners. So why not make it open, transparent, and participative in the Philippines if this being done in other countries? So susulpot na lang po ang mga pangalan po ng chair and commissioners without the public participating and the choice of the chair and the commissioner. Ano pang sabi po ni Chief Justice Puno, in one decision, during elections, the COMELEC is a super body. It has 12 powers and functions under the 87 Constitution. It has 14 powers under the Omnibus Election Code. It has quasi-judicial powers, legislative and executive powers. That's why he said in one decision, it is a super body during elections. One chairman proudly said, kami ang pinaka-powerful during elections. So, considering the powers that were given to the Commonwealth, why not make the process public and participative in the appointment of the chair and the commissioners? Commonwealth and Philippine Electoral Institute in Mexico, they have two bodies, the Federal Electoral Institute and Electoral Courts. Now, in charge of resolving cases, protests, qualifications, etc., is the electoral court in charge of administering and managing the elections will be the Federal Electoral Institute. Kaya po may tumatagal po ang mga kaso, etc., etc. So I think high time as part of the amendment of the Constitution that we should have 
two bodies, one in charge of managing the elections, one in charge of resolving electoral protests. Election Management Academy. In Thailand, we have the Electoral Management Academy. All public officers have to undergo the process of education. So why not adapt the same thing in the Philippines, where our public officers, sometimes lacking qualifications, will be knowledgeable about the electoral process. Candidates' qualifications. I taught political for many years, more than a decade. And students would notice, sir, back people running for president, running for vice president, running for senate, for congress, local candidates, the only qualification is able to read and write. Whereas you apply for a position in government, employee, or okay, janitor, or etc., etc., my educational qualification. Now we know that if you serve government, there are many facets in running a country, governing our country. I think worth considering for this forthcoming constitutional convention, no? Forthcoming constitutional convention, baka idagdag po natin. Qualification. Okay? Number two, political party development bill. This is pending in Congress for a long time. In the House, in the Senate. What are the provisions? Prevents turncoatism, political butterflies. Provides for state subsidy for political parties. Provides for education of members of uh, political parties and education of the electorate. There is a bill pending in the House, a bill pending in the Senate. I hope oh, this will be fast track to improve our electoral process. Political campaign finance, the COMELEC has put up a campaign finance unit to monitor expenses of, uh, of candidates, okay, to know who are the contributors, etc., etc., to regulate campaign spending, to prevent political corruption. In other countries, it's a body, not simply a unit. In the U.S., it's a body supported by the Department of Justice and important government agencies. Why not in the Philippines? To level the playing field for those qualified but who have less resources and those who have more resources but less qualifications. Para po pantay. So this will be the function of the political campaign finance to professionalize the campaign finance and hopefully a law will be passed by Congress. So lahat po, no? The young ones can now participate in the electoral process. Those who have graduated fresh from uh, their schools, but knowing that they can run and help in the governance with the playing field level, so they can now participate, okay? In the electoral process. Political dynasties. Medyo tama po si Manung Pepe, no? Uh, as may be provided by law. We supported this uh, provision in the Constitution. I recall Professor Nulledo sponsoring this uh, provision in Section 26 of Article 2 of the Constitution. But the truth is, and we have to confess, and fairly is there, because of lack of time, material thing, we were facing with several coup d'etats every now and then. We have to normalize the democratic process in the Philippines. While meeting at the Batasang Pansa, there were coditas, big ways. The last of which was the Manila Hotel codita. The best way is to address with a political process under a new constitution. <coughs> so, ipagpaumanhin niyo po, kung yan po ay hindi po na-address, not making that provision self-executory, but needing a law to flesh it out. So hopefully, the Constitutional Convention, okay, once convened, will address the Section 26 of Article 2 of the 1987 Constitution. Right now, ito ay pinag-uusapan sa Kongreso. Kay Neri Colminares, pag isa pong kamag-anak na kaupo, bawal na yung iba. It was amended, kung pwede dalawa. Dinagdag naman, kung pwede tatlo. 
walang katapusan po. No? So many will have been submitted, but these are in the back border. Frozen. Because sabi po ng ating uh, Manong Pepe, so many members of political dynasty serve both in the House and in the Senate. Electorate, a school curriculum, I think should be part of the school curriculum that pupils and students be taught about the electoral process. There are countries where pupils are being exposed to the electoral process, being taught how it works, how it operates. So I think high time that in our country, part of the school curriculum will be a subject on the electoral process. This was proposed in the 1980s Constitutional Commission, but it was voted down. Uh, but many have realized that there should be a curriculum about the elections that should be conveyed to our school children, even to our law students. Used to be a one-unit course in the schools of law, college of law. Inalis po yan. Just recently, in integrate sa administrative law. As a matter of fact, it should be a three-unit course. Because every now and then, every after two years, we have election. And other than election, we have recall, referendum and plebiscite. Should not our people be taught about the electoral process? Romy, do you agree? No, okay. Press. I think our press should be vigorous in examining qualifications of our candidates. If you recall when Sarah Palin ran for a political position in the U.S. as vice president, he was, he was asked about Russia. Okay? And then said, oh, I've been reading many uh, newspapers uh, regarding Russia, etc. What newspaper? Because of the press that was insistent. She could not name a paper. And that affected the candidacy of Sarah Palin because of a vigorous press that was objective, that was impartial, that scrutinized the qualifications of candidates. Now I close. This electoral process uh, that would include uh, making it inclusive and merit-oriented, making uh, the uh, political structure or systems more people-sensitive, I think would not be possible without three players. So what are these players? We have the Electoral Commission as one player. We have people's organizations and non-governmental organizations. And we have the public. Bakit po nakaboto po mga PWDs? Ang mga detainees? IPs? Why was the process expanded? Not because of Gomelec, but because of a vigorous and participative people's organizations and non-governmental organizations. Why was a campaign finance unit created in the Gomelec? Not because of Gomelec, but because of a participative, vigilant people's organizations and non-governmental organizations. So these players had to play together, interactive, collaborative. There's a book, Why Nations Fail. Wala na sa national bookstore, no? but you can get a copy from the Foley Book Bookstore. Why Nations Fail. And based on history, political science, and economics, a study of systems and governments, why nations fail, the book tells us because they have non-transparent, non-exclusive, inclusive political institutions. Sarado po. South Korea was compared to North Korea. Boundary lang po yan. A place in the U.S., boundary lang. Arizona and Mexico. In Africa, Botswana, other countries. Why are countries prospering and others failing? The book will tell us. It is because of transparent, participative, fully inclusive political systems. So unless we address our political systems, open to federalism and to Mabini's parliamentary form of government, then the scenario created by our Chief Justice will appear and reappear every now and then. And of course, it's not enough we advocate, 
we speak, we organize, I think it's all right, Labor. We work and we pray, and our country will succeed.